Hi guys, in this video I'm going to have a go at making an adult Simba face cake. This time from the older film. If you haven't seen it already, I did try and do one of the new film. So I found myself a picture online and I've cut it out around the outside edges. I've actually printed it off a couple of times because I usually get cake all over my template. I've just made sure I've got a cake board big enough for my template to go on. And I've got some cake sheets here. Again, just making sure they're about the size of my picture. It's a little bit short on the bottom, this one. Filling it with buttercream in the middle. I'm going to use my template to cut around for the basic shape. And where it's just a tiny bit short there, it also is missing on my picture as well. I'm just going to add, can you see that cake off cut on there? And in case you're all wondering what I do with my cake off cuts, I eat a lot of them. And quite often I give them to my neighbours and my family. So they don't go to waste. So I've just cut a little bit off the bottom of my template, which is kind of the bottom layer of his fur. And I'm now going to cut a bit more cake off that. So I'm cutting around the edge of that and then halfway sort of between the layers and cutting and removing that part. So it's kind of steps down. Then we're going to cut out the face so that we know what shape we have to carve into the cake. So you see the cake's making my template very greasy. So I've printed off more than one of these. So Again, I'm putting this against my cake and I'm using my knife to run through all these lines that I've cut out. So around his face, just underneath the face, a bit of hair there and where the ear is. So I'm trimming part way down my cake behind the ear. So that bit of cake sits deeper down. And I'm going to trim off around the edges. So it sits further back than the rest of the mane. And then I'm cutting off just little slopes around the edges and kind of a little bit out of this triangle of fur under the chin and then again just below that triangle we're cutting it out some more so I'm kind of cutting at angles so that I'll get indentations so it's not too flat on the surface so around the face the eyes want to be a little bit deeper than the nose so let's cut some more out of the eye area a little bit out from the parting in his hair and just underneath those pieces of hair but not quite as deep as the eyes and where the bridge of the nose is, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of cake off cut just so that that sticks out a bit more. And also kind of the mouth area, the mouth and nose. We want to use some more scrap bits so that this bit stands out the most. So as long as it's bigger than my template, we can stick it on and then we can cut out around that template again. And let's cut a bit of a curve so it's in shape with the bottom of the mouth. Taking a little bit out there. So the bottom bit is sticking out more than the top bit on mine. So we've got our shape like that. Now, I should have probably gone for a different flavour than red velvet because this one's quite soft, so it is quite tricky for me to cut it and crumb coat it. You can stick it in the freezer for a bit if you want. I'm just going to put a layer of buttercream all the way over. You can use chocolate ganache if you prefer. But you see, because the cake's quite soft, it's picking up quite a lot of my crumbs. And what I'm going to do is once I've covered it, I'm going to put that in the fridge to firm up. And I should really add a second layer. But I'm a bit short of time today, so I'm just going to leave it with the crumb coat. And I'm just going to mix some colour for the mane. So I've kind of got brown and red together here. Roll it big enough that it covers the whole of your cake. Now, my fondant's a little bit soft. And it is actually very warm today when I'm making this. So it's a little bit harder than it would normally be. Or it's a bit harder for me to make the fondant softer. So it is cracking a little bit when we're putting it on, but I'm pressing it in between all the gaps and then cutting off any extra that goes onto the board. Just gently using your fingers and do make sure you've got nice clean hands. We're going to press into all those indentations, all those bits that we removed and cut out. So press gently. You can see where I've pressed a little bit hard. I've managed to tear through it. Hopefully we'll be able to cover that up when we do a bit of shading with our powders. Just putting in a couple of lines now with the end of my Dresden tool. So I have a picture next to you for reference so you can see where you want to draw in all these lines. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the face. So can you see I've cut out the rough shape of the face. Sometimes you might have to cut it a little bit larger because the cake always ends up bigger than our template. Or you can stretch it into place. So we're just pushing this right up to the hairline. I'm going to remove the bit where the nose sits only because the nose is going to go on in a different piece or the mouth and nose. And I'll have a lot of fondant there if I leave like three layers of fondant. So I'm just putting in any lines again, looking at your picture. Now I haven't actually got lines there on my picture, but I wanted to put them on. But up next to the sort of side of the nose or the bridge of the nose, 
and I've put a little line in the middle of where the eye goes and then we've got sort of a semicircle for the ear that we're going to fold roughly in half and I'm going to try and insert that just into the cake at the side there. I've added a bit of white to the colour that I used for the face. So the face is kind of a brown and yellow mixed together. And I will put links to everything I've used in the description box below the video. So we're then going to try and cut this to the size and shape we want. You can use your template if you want. You don't have to guess like I'm doing. And let's see, so we should have a line there like that. And then I've got a little bit of red mixed with his face colour to give me a colour for the nose. I've got a little sausage shape, I've cut a bit off the back of it. And then we're just sort of bending it slightly to put it in place for the nose. Let's put an indentation in for each nostril, just using my Dresden tool. Then let's work out the eye area. So I'm using a little bit of the leftover sort of colour that we used for his muzzle, rolling it thin and I've cut out around the eye area where it's a paler colour and I'm using that as a template. Let's push this in place. So this will sit deep into the bits that we've made for the eyes. Let's put that line back in. And then I've cut out the eye itself um, from my paper template. And we're going to kind of draw around it with our Dresden tool so we know where the eye is going to sit. And I'll do exactly the same for the other eye. I'm just now pushing it in so it's a little bit deeper so that when I put the eyes in, they'll sit into that little eye socket. A nice pale yellow. And we're going to just push the ball till it fills that gap that we made. And exactly the same with the other eye. Now I've got some brown fondant. You can use modeling paste if it's easier. Um, we've got two circles, black and brown. The black wants to be a little bit smaller. The black will just sit in the middle of the brown. And we're going to pop that in for the eye. And I can cut anything off the bottom where it kind of overlaps beyond the eye. And then we're going to add his eyebrows. So I've just got like a sausage of black with a thin point on either end and we're going to bend those round so that they match with the shape of the template. So pushing that into place. So the one on the right just goes down over his eye a little bit. And then we want a nice thin piece of black to just go in between his, his mouth. We want a small dot of white in each eye to give his eyes a bit of a sparkle. And then I'm rolling some more black, nice and thin, and this is just going to go around the outside edge of the eye. I just took the eyebrow off to get that in place, so I'm going to put that eyebrow back in there. Because it's quite warm today, stuff's clinging to itself without water, but you can use water if you need to, or even edible glue to stick things together. Now let's add a bit of colour. So I'm using edible dusts, and I've got a range of colours. You don't need all these colours that I've got here. I'm using brown and red mixed together for the main. And we're just going in any parts that are a little bit deeper because they want to be darker in colour. Again, look at your picture for a rough guide of where you can put the shadow in. And I've put some inside the ear in pink and brown. And then on the face, I'm using more a orangey kind of colour. Just make sure it's a little bit darker than the face colour itself. And then we're going to go in with a little bit more brown in the nostrils. So it's just a dark brown I've got here. Once you're happy with your shading, we're going to cover the board. Now sometimes I cover the board before I actually put the cake on. This time I'm going to kind of put it on in pieces afterwards. So I've rolled the green really thin and I'm going to try kind of patching it in because I want it to look like lots of leaves overlapping. Also it's hard to put it on in a single piece so this gives me a good excuse for putting it on in lots of pieces. Can you see I've cut some bits to kind of rough leaf shapes? very rough leaf shapes and we're just going to keep overlapping this all the way around until we've covered the board. So pushing it up tight to the cake and stretch it anywhere that's a bit short or you can add another leaf shape and then let's just draw some little lines into our leaves. So it's still looking quite flat is my board which is fine if that's how you want to keep it but I think once we've drawn lines in all these I might make some more leaves that are a little bit chunkier so it's got more of a 3D effect on the board. And these ones, I think I'm going to cut little pieces out so they look more like tropical kind of leaves or the kind that you'd find in the jungle. And then let's place this on our board. Again, you can use water to stick it in place. And we're going to put a few of those all over the board. Then what I'm going to do is using a darker green, I'm just going to put a bit of shading on here. Again, stop it looking quite so flat. 
So either in the middle of the leaves where the lines are, or you can dust it right around the very outside edges of the leaf so that the leaf looks like it's standing out a bit more. And I could have put my fondant on in different shades of green as well. That would have given me a nice look. And there he is, all finished. So it's quite different to the one I made a couple of weeks ago, which was a more realistic style lion. If you haven't checked out the other one, please do so. Let me know which one you prefer, the one from the old film or the one from the new film. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to vote for us in the Cake Masters Awards, I'll put a link in the description box below where you can vote for us. Your votes are very much appreciated. Thanks again for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.